The International Space Station is a modular space station in low Earth orbit. It is the largest artificial object in space and the largest satellite that is visible to the naked eye from Earth's surface. It's been 20 years since the first components of the International Space Station were launched from Earth. Orbiting the planet every 90 minutes at about 250 miles above Earth's surface, the ISS has been the cornerstone of NASA's mission for much of these last two decades. The ISS isn't orbiting without a purpose. It's also been home to thousands of science experiments that seek to understand life among the stars or to give us unique insights about life here on Earth. As an orbiting laboratory, the International Space Station offers researchers around the world the unique opportunity to perform experiments in microgravity and under the rigors of the space environment. Currently, a crew of scientists are conducting scientific experiments in areas such as astrobiology, astronomy, meteorology, physics, and other fields. One major focus right now is discovering ways to protect astronauts from radiation. Scientists have used the station for everything from testing technology for future space exploration to studying human health. Sometimes their work involves some pretty unusual experiments. Here are five cool space experiments you need to see. Well, so I'm going to get Tim to spin me around uh, doing something that would probably make me feel quite sick down on Earth. So let's see how that goes. This could be the worst worst idea I've ever had. Okay, so yeah, I'll just go into a ball and start spinning. And then if. Uh... Okay, I'll see if I can. I'm feeling dizzy. I'll see how quickly it stops. So it definitely felt dizzy initially. And now it's gone. No, it's that yeah. quick. Yeah, completely normal. Amazing. Yeah, and again, I wouldn't be able to kind of just get off a fairground ride spinning that quickly for so long. I feel normal. Yeah. Crazy. It is amazing. Before we continue further, be sure to subscribe to our channel. That way you won't miss any of our weekly videos. Hi, this is Scott Kelly aboard the International Space Station. I wanted to uh, do a little demonstration of these paddles. They're called hydrophobic paddles, and they uh, they repel water, kind of like a raincoat. But uh, but up here on the space station, they allow you to uh, play ping pong with a ball of water, and uh, it's pretty cool. Thank you. 
up. I'm Don Pettit, I'm on the International Space Station, and I'm going to show you some interesting observations about water sheets. Here in a weightless environment on the International Space Station, you can make films of pure water. It's like trying to draw, stick a loop in a bottle of water and pulling out a film. You, you just can't do that on Earth. You have to add soap. And I'm going to use a number of different geometries, a number of different kinds of loops, and a number of different experiments with these water films. So you could look, for example, at diffusion in water, say a food coloring or any other substance you want in water. You could look at the diffusion in a two-dimensional sheet. Because these water sheets are so thin, convection perpendicular to the sheet will not be a factor and you can just look at fluid motion within the plane of the water sheet. So here I put a drop of blue food coloring and a drop of red food coloring and a drop of green food coloring and then you give it a little puff of air and the viscous forces in these thin sheets are small compared to the, the, the uh, fluid motion so they will continue to spin like this for uh, five or ten minutes until the viscous forces will eventually have them slow down and the food coloring will get stretched out and leave streak lines and if you do too much convection in here then you end up with just this black sheet Here's another water sheet example, and this one is thin. This one's about 200 microns thick, and again, I'm putting red food coloring on. And when you put a drop of red food coloring on, notice those little vortices, those little swirls that kind of look like mushroom caps. Really what you're seeing is a cross-section through a vortex ring. And here I'm going to put a little puff of air. I'm going to generate another two-dimensional equivalent of a vortex ring. And again, it looks more like a mushroom cap. But uh, this is what a vortex ring would look like if you were able to take a slice through it. And now I've got a sheet that's about, actually it's a little thinner than the wire now that's suspending it. You can see if, if these shades are slightly convex, that means they're thicker in the middle, then at the edges it makes a convex lens and it's a positive lens. If they're slightly concaved, then, which means it's thinner in the middle, then at the edges it makes a, a negative lens so things look smaller. And this one is actually pretty much parallel. It doesn't seem to make my face there. actually. It I think it makes me look better, don't you? Look at that. 